And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Blessed are those who awoke this morning with an extra hour of sleep. I always love this day. It's the best day of the year because you just feel a little more rested. It's way better than the spring alternative um, where we all come in a little cranky and some of us don't come in at all because we, we didn't set our alarms and we're an hour late. This day is great because people show up early and they say, hey, when's church start? And I say, in an hour. <laughs> Thanks for being here early. But that formula, I was joking when I said blessed are those. I mean, in all seriousness, thanks be to God for sleep. But blessed are those is the formula this morning that Jesus uses to to describe a a whole lot of people. And it's not what you and I would expect normally. I mean, if you've read the Gospels, you expect it. But just being a human living in this world, uh, these are not the types you would call blessed normally, is it? If you're being honest with yourself. Uh, normally, here in America, we would say blessed are those who have money, blessed, blessed are the wealthy uh, and the healthy and the wise and those who are doing quite well, thank you very much. That's what we would normally think. Not blessed are these people that Jesus describes. Unfortunately, that word blessed or blessed has been co-opted by uh, a pathology uh, called the prosperity gospel. You flip on the television or get on Uh, YouTube and search for preachers, uh, some of the most popular ones out there are ones preaching health and wealth as God's response to our faithfulness. And that's not at all the message of Jesus this morning or ever, that if we do well, God will bless us. You often hear that phrase, God helps those who help themselves. And that is not in the Bible. I think it was Benjamin Franklin. Uh, But many people think that is what Christianity is about. If you just do your part, God will bless you. And again, blessing in that context usually means uh, material gain uh, and help. But Jesus has nothing to say about that. Not blessed are the wealthy, but blessed are the poor. That's the first words off of his lips. I know here in Matthew, he says, blessed are the poor in spirit. But in Luke, it's more simple. It says, blessed are the poor. Now, how many of you have ever come across what you might consider a poor person? And I know it's all relative. And thought, gosh, this person is blessed. It's not usually your first thought. Undoubtedly, we have homeless people here in Coleman and in Alabama, but uh, I saw it uh, all the time in New York. I'm on every corner of every block. Uh, there was someone panhandling uh, out of necessity in some cases, but uh, I never thought to myself, this person is blessed. And yet God would say that this person is blessed. The gospel requires that we recalibrate all that we think is right. Isaiah says as much in his uh, His prophetic word, it's not in our scripture today, but he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. Everything you thought was true, flip it over on its head and that's probably what is true. Blessed are the losers is how you could really uh, encapsulate this whole uh, litany of blessings. Blessed are those who are not on top, but in fact are on bottom. Abba preaches that gospel in the song Waterloo. I feel like I win when I lose. Now, they meant something entirely different, but when I hear it, I can't help but think of Jesus' message. That blessed are those who are down and out and are humble and meek and lowly and lost. This list doesn't say all of that. I mean, it's a short list, and it's not a comprehensive list, but I think you could fill in the blanks and say, who are the other ones that God would consider blessed? Yeah, blessed are those who are down and out. Blessed are those who are lowly. Blessed are those who are sick, who are suffering from an illness. Blessed are those whose family has been torn apart. Blessed are those who are not doing well. God draws near to them just as much as we think he draws near to us. And that's the thing with with passages like this. We tend to put ourselves on one side or the other. Like, oh, I'm not poor, or oh, I am poor. Or, oh, I'm I'm meek, or oh, I'm not meek. The point is, this is a, a list that covers the whole gamut of human experience. And we find ourselves in one of these categories, surely. But the point is to give you hope. That's the point of this. That God is for those who can't help themselves. Which runs in the face of the American dream and everything we've been taught. And I'm not trashing the American dream, but I am saying it's not the gospel. It's fine on its own, but uh, God helps those who are not fine on their own. 
You've heard me made mention before of this uh, Gregory Boyle, this uh, priest in California, uh, who reforms ex-gang members. He's written two books that are uh, screamingly funny, and they'll make you cry on the next page, too. Uh, the first one is Tattoos on the Heart, and the second is uh, Barking to the Choir. And he runs a ministry called Homeboy Ministries or Homeboy Industries, and he calls these ex-gang members homeboys. And these are people, I mean, they were, they were rough. We're, we're talking tough rough felons, not just uh, little misdemeanors here and there. Uh, we're talking people who have served serious time. And yeah, you can talk choice and you can talk, well, gosh, they, they didn't have to do that. But uh, I, I don't want to think of a situation where I have to do such heinous acts just to put bread on my family's table. And some of these young men and women find themselves in that situation. But despite their situations and their circumstances, you know, uh, Father Boyle is not asking if they were right or wrong or uh, if their sentencing was right or wrong. He just approaches them with the good news that they are blessed in Jesus Christ. Not because of what they've done, and certainly not because of what they've done or left undone, and not because of who they are, but simply because God is love. He describes embarking in the choir, he says, you know, we don't rescue people uh, from these gangs. We receive them. So you use the language of rescue, it, it basically determines that they need to change. We've rescued them from this, and now they've got to change. He doesn't want to give that kind of message. And as it turns out, they do change. They do reform. They do, in almost all cases, uh, start going to church and, and being more like Christ, but without using that language that they have to. He asked one of the gang members, it's a routine part of their process that when they receive someone, uh, they have to be drug tested. They've given some time and some uh, fair amount of warning to get things out of their system, and he'll interview them and say, well, if I test you, will you be clean? And one young man said, I will absolutely be clean. I'll only test positive for one thing, hope. That's all that I have left anymore is hope that this is going to work and that God is actually going to do something. And that's the kind of thing that Jesus is talking about here. All of these blessings on people that we would otherwise consider not blessed. It's a word of hope that Jesus has not left nor forsaken them, nor you. That in your life's darkest moments, Christ is in the midst of it. You see, Christ humbled himself, as Paul says uh, in Philippians, even to the point of death on a cross. If God's willing to do that, he's certainly willing to lie in the ditch with you when you're having a hard time. Whether it's financial or biological with your health, or it's a social uh, crisis that you're experiencing, or just the burden of going on in the year 2020, Christ is right there with you. So my word to you this morning is you are blessed. Not because you're doing well, but because God has called you out and sanctified you. And here on All Saints Day, we especially celebrate that, that you've been set apart as a saint, as a child of God. It's often misconstrued that saints are those who've done really great things and they've died and the church remembers them in the calendar. And those are saints. But as we know from Scripture, you are a saint too. Because what does the word mean, to be sanctified, to be a saint? It is simply you have been set aside for God's purpose. He has called you out, he's loved you as his own, and he has a purpose for you. So this morning, friends, you are blessed saints of God. Not because of pedigree or inheritance or worth, but because of who your God is. He's the one who calls us out. And so today, if you leave this place, and maybe you stop by Publix or a convenience store, and we often hear the phrase, oh, well, have a blessed day. You can say it and mean it in a new, fuller sense. That you have had a blessed day, you will have a blessed day, that you yourself are blessed. So this morning, as we celebrate that, we'll celebrate here in a few moments at the table where we're all called to receive uh, from God's bounty, recognizing that we've already received it by his promise, the Spirit lives in us and upon us. Recalibrate what you think blessing means. It's not what the prosperity gospel says, which is no gospel at all. It's not what the televangelists say. It's what Jesus says right here, that he has humbled himself and drawn near to you so that you could have life and life abundant. Not in the hereafter only, we certainly believe in that, but here and now as well. That maybe, just maybe, if you were tested, you would test positive for hope this morning, too. Amen.